do not get in the way of a pregnant lady and her donuts. That is the moral of this video. Along the way, we'll talk about expectations in English and how to describe how good something is. Is it mediocre? Out of this world? Stick with us, learn useful English phrases and English vocabulary, and a cute toddler makes an appearance too. Important, I am not pregnant again. This is footage from a couple of years ago. We visit these friends every year, and for three years, we'd been trying to get these donuts. We'd heard such good things about them each year. For whatever reason, it didn't work out to go until this trip. So at this point, our expectations were pretty high. An expectation is a belief that something will happen. Our high expectations meant we were expecting these donuts to be amazing. We're on our way to try what we've heard are some of the best donuts in the world. So Tara just said she hoped she wasn't talking them up too much because we've been wanting to come here for three years. And sometimes when you talk something up too much, then you get let down because you blew it up in your head into something more than it could ever be. Talking something up, a phrasal verb. When you talk something up, you talk about how great it is. These donuts are the best donuts you'll ever have. People come from all over the state for these donuts. Think about something you've heard great things about. A movie, a restaurant, a place to work. Got it? Now I'll make a sentence with it. I'll do one. The critics really talked up Parasite, but I never saw it. Now you make a sentence out loud for your example using talk up. Go ahead and pause this video if you wanna take your time. And before I forget, if you like this video or you learned something new, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe with notifications. I'd love to have you as my student here on YouTube. Now, let's hear just that phrase again. So Tara just said she hoped she wasn't talking him up too much. Talking him up. What's um? This is one of the common ways we pronounce the word them. In this case, them refers to the donuts. And what we do is drop the th sound. We also change the vowel, eh, them, to m, mm, m, mm, m, mm, the schwa. Uh, 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 uh. And we say it really quickly, m, mm, m, mm, m. Mm. We link it on to the end of the word that comes before it. Talking them, talking them, talking them up. So Tara just said she hoped she wasn't talking him up too much. So Tara just said she hoped she wasn't talking him up too much. Now I also said let down. Sometimes when you talk something up too much, then you get let down because you blew it up in your head into something more than it could ever be. You get let down disappointed. Like the Beatles song, Don't Let Me Down. You get let down because you blew it up in your head into something more than it could ever be. Because you blew it up in your head. Blow up, a phrasal verb, it has a lot of different meanings. The way I used it here, it means to make something bigger, better in your mind. You think about something so much, so positively, that you kind of blow it up into something bigger or better than it can actually be in reality. It also means to explode. They're gonna blow up the old building to make space for new houses. It also means to get really angry. My boss blew up at me for being late again. It also means to enlarge, like a photo. We're gonna blow up a family photo to hang in the dining room. You get let down because you blew it up in your head into something more than it could ever be. As we said, talking something up is to speak very favorably of it. What's the opposite? To belittle something, to disparage it. In other words, to say it's not very good. Talk down. So David said we're gonna talk him down. How do we talk him down? These donuts are kind of stale. Well, they're just, they're average. Notice that them reduction. Talk them down. Talk them. Talk them. Talk down does have another definition. It's when you think someone can't understand what you're saying, so you really simplify it. It's a little insulting. If you're arguing with somebody and you feel that they're doing this to you, you can say, don't talk down to me. 
But here we're talking about trying to lower our expectations. They're really high and we don't want to be disappointed. High expectations, low expectations, no expectations. If you have no expectations, that means you have no idea what to expect. You've heard nothing about it. If something's really been talked up, of course, you'll have very high expectations. If it's been talked down, you might have low expectations. Your expectations might also be based on previous experience. For example, if you went to Disney World last year and had the time of your life, and now you're going back, you probably have pretty high expectations. So we decided to lower our expectations. We're going to come up with a bunch of ways to say the donuts just aren't that good. So David said we're going to talk them down. How do we talk them down? These donuts are kind of stale. Stale. You do not want that in a pastry. It's a few days old. Ew. You want the opposite. Fresh. What else? Well, they're just, they're average. Yeah. Average. Not terrible, but not very good. If you're selling something, this is not what you want people to say about it. You want them to give it a glowing review. That is to say how much they loved it. You want them to say it's out of this world. Out of this world, out of this pronounced outa, means excellent, the best of the best. Way better than average. Well, they're just, they're average. Yeah. <laughs> They're just average. Stoney, can you talk them down a little bit? Say, so, I bet these donuts aren't that great. Not that great. Again, that's sort of like average. What else? How else can you describe something as being not very good? Let's hear what Stoney has to say about the donuts. Stoney, yummy. Oh, you think they're going to be yummy? Uh, Stoney's talking them up. Talking them up. He didn't want to talk them down. He was too excited to have donuts. But David and I had lots of other phrases to say something is not just very good. Stoney, as you'll notice, was really into repeating what we were saying. David, you said they were kind of average, and then you had another phrase for that. What did you say? Well, yeah, I've heard that these donuts are just run of the mill. Yeah. They're just run of the mill. They're just run of the mill. They're nothing special. Nothing special. Run of the mill, nothing special. The idiom run of the mill means exactly what we're talking about here, average. Not especially good, not especially bad, just ordinary. Notice this stress there, just like when we reduced them in talking them up. Run of the mill. Of and the are unstressed said very quickly. They should not have the same stress as run and mill. I even reduce of by dropping the V. Of the. Of the. Run of the. Run of the mill. We also said they were nothing special. Changing the ing ending, nothing, to the in ending, nothing. This is something we do sometimes in familiar phrases like this. It makes it a little more casual. Nothing special. Well, yeah, I've heard that these donuts are just run of the mill. Yeah, they're just run of the mill. They're nothing special. Nothing special. What else? Mediocre. Mediocre. <laughs> Stoney thinks so too. I bet he won't think so when he eats them. Eat some. Again, reducing them to um. We also said mediocre. Just not very good. You'd never want to hear your boss saying about you, his performance is pretty mediocre. Let's hear three more ways to say something is not good. These donuts leave a lot to be desired. Yeah, they're falling short of expectations. Anybody else got one? Mm. They suck. Yes! <laughs> the final one there, they suck, is very informal, maybe a little bit crass, not a cuss word, but sort of. It's used a lot in the U.S., but you probably don't want to use it in a professional setting. Casually, you can use it to describe something that's not good at all, like these donuts suck, or the weather sucks, or that movie sucked. You can also use it for situations. Let's say you run out of gas and you're stranded on the side of the road. You might say, well, this sucks. You can also use it for sympathy. If a friend is disappointed, for example, my computer crashed and I lost a bunch of work, you could say, oh, that sucks but you would not want to use this for sympathy in a more extreme situation like 
my dog died. Do not follow that with, that sucks. Let's listen to these three again. We all laugh because of how informal sucks is, and to be honest, that's probably not a word we want Stoney using yet. These donuts leave a lot to be desired. Yeah, they're falling short of expectations. Anybody else got one? Mm. They suck. Yes! <laughs> we have one more. These donuts are nothing to write home about. Another idiom that again means just nothing special, not particularly good. You wouldn't write home to family. Back in the days of writing letters to tell them how good the donuts are. Ordinary run-of-the-mill donuts, we hope that's not true. Okay, so we've used a lot of phrases to describe the donuts not being good. We've tried to lower our expectations. Let's go try these donuts. Rise and roll. They took the and reduction and they wrote it. They made just an N. Rise and roll. It's overrated? Well, we're trying to lower your expectations. Yeah, thank you. They're still trying to lower our expectations. Saying something is overrated means you don't think it's as good as other people say it is. Is it good? Is it meeting your expectations? Stony ate a free sample. Let's go ahead and put in an order. He'll have one of the cinnamon caramel and I'll have one too. So two of those. Three of those. Three of those. A glaze. I'll have a glaze. You want a glaze too? Well, let's split the glaze and we'll let's split the chocolate covered. Lucas, Lucas and Tara should come with us. We got a dozen. One glaze, one chocolate covered. We finish putting in our order and pay. Now let's try these donuts. Here, Sony, put on your smock. A smock is something kids wear to keep clean while doing messy art projects, or in this case, eating. We also have lots of bibs which just go around the neck. With a smock, you put your arms through. So you love it. Is, do you think it's as good as the Krispy Kreme fresh off the conveyor belt? As you know, I've never had that. You haven't? Right. A Krispy Kreme fresh off the conveyor belt. Remember, fresh, the opposite of stale, which we talked about earlier in this video. I grew up in Gainesville, Florida, where there's a Krispy Kreme donut shop. And when you drive by, if they're finishing up a batch of donuts, they turn on this neon sign to let you know they're hot, super fresh, just made. And when they're that fresh, they're truly the best. A conveyor belt is something you'll see in a factory, moving things from one place to another. So if it's coming off the conveyor belt, it's done. It's hot, it's perfect. And David has never had one. I didn't know that, I forgot. Good one, Cameron. But yeah, there's no chance. I mean, nothing could be better than this, so that's not better. I, no, I'm just saying, get a glazed off the conveyor belt. It's better than that glazed. So there it is, my opinion. These donuts were good, but they were not the best donuts I've ever had. However, I did say this about them. It's definitely worth the drive. What do you say? Definitely worth the drive. Oh, good. Okay. Worth the drive. Worth it. We use this phrase when we're talking about something that was expensive or took effort. Even with that expense, we're glad we did it. It was worth it. It's a long hike to the top of the mountain, but the views are so great, it's worth it. The necklace was very expensive, but my mom likes it so much, it was worth it. In this case, we had to drive 30 minutes to get there, but it was so good, it was worth it. I try to make great videos for you so that each minute you spend with me feels worth it. I make new videos here on YouTube every Tuesday and I love being your English teacher. Keep your learning going right now with this video and don't forget to subscribe with notifications. I'll see you back here next week. That's it and thanks so much for using Rachel's English.